Hello, it's Joe here at Riverside Barbecue School. There are a few dishes as classic in this country as roast beef. Um, and what we're trying to do here is take those dishes that you might more conventionally see cooked indoors and introduce some live fire fun to them. So in that spirit today, we've got some smoked Jacob's Ladder short rib with Yorkshire puddings, roast potatoes and some roasted carrots. And all of that's going to come together on a single Weber, Weber kettle. And the idea being that this kind of demonstrates that you can pull together a whole meal for your family or your friends uh, just on a, a single grill. Now Jacob's Ladder is one of those cuts that's known for being quite tough and conventionally you'd probably cook it low and slow to really render down all the fat, break down that connective tissue, make sure it's nice and soft. Today I've gone for the hot and fast approach um, which achieves the same results uh, just in a shorter time by cooking at a higher temperature. So let's get the beef. We've got this beautiful piece of beef from Tom Hickson's of Smithfield. This is a Jacob's Ladder, otherwise known as a short rib. And the thing I love about this cut is that you've got such beautiful intramuscular marbling, um, which means that it stays nice and juicy when you cook it. So what we're going to do with this is just hit it with some cold pressed rapeseed oil. which will help the salt and pepper adhere. And I'm just going nice and simple with this. We don't really want any flavors which will interfere with anything else and nothing that's gonna overpower the balance of the dish that we end up with. So we've got our rapeseed oil on there now. I'm just going to get a good bit of salt on there and a good bit of pepper and a nice trick if you don't want to have to keep washing your hands between passing the salt and pepper in and then picking up your, uh, your salt and pepper grinders and trying to pat them into the sides. If you just put some seasoning in your tray, either side of the meat, and then what you can do, you don't need to touch those again, is just pick the meat up and get the sides into that seasoning. Make sure you get all of it up on all sides. And then you have a nice uniformly seasoned piece of meat and you don't have to contaminate any of your equipment. Well, I've checked the beef and I happen to know it's ready, but I'll just show you my process. You, you might be able to see there are a few holes in here already. At this point, I'm not going by temperature because there's quite a range in which it can be ready depending on the cut and uh, you know, the provenance of the animal. So really what I do is just try and feel it in a few places from different angles. And that is soft as you like. It's reading mid to high 90s. Uh, sometimes you might find things will be ready in the low 90s and sometimes you might find that you have to take them all the way up to the high 90 degrees Celsius. So that's ready to come off. Now the beef's come off, that's in a cool box resting with a tea towel over the top. At the very least you want to give that about 45 minutes. It will be good up to two and a half, three hours even. Slightly smaller piece of meat so when people say you can rest a brisket for four hours that's because you've got such residual heat in a joint like that. So I wouldn't probably do any longer than three on the rest, but that is ample time to do what you need to do. Uh, it doesn't mean you have to rush, you can afford to take your time. So what I've done is I've uh, got a chimney starter going just before I took the beef off. That's about two thirds of the way full with briquettes and they're just coming up to temperature now. I've got the potatoes on the boil. They're just boiling through and obviously then we'll roast them off. So we'll tip the charcoal out, we'll heat some fat up and we'll get the Yorkshire puds and the potatoes on. I've tipped the lit briquettes into the kettle. Now, uh, what I've done is I've put the charcoal baskets in either side and they're both pretty full. And I've got uh, the pan for the potatoes with some duck fat in on the bottom grate between the two charcoal baskets and a muffin tin ready for the Yorkshire puddings with some beef fat in on the top grate. 
what you really need to be careful of is the, the aggressive heat that you're going to get from those charcoal baskets. So we'll keep an eye on it. Should be okay, but if it starts to get too dark, then what we'll do is we'll take one of the charcoal baskets out, maybe decant some of that charcoal into the other one, and then just move everything across so that there's a little bit of distance between the food and the heat. So let's get the pans out. So ordinarily I wouldn't advise that you leave the lid off your barbecue for fear of losing so much heat, but uh, in this instance I'm just going to quickly show you what I'm doing. So I've got my potatoes here, little sizzle as they hit the fat, one stubborn one in there. Now what I did, I, I didn't quite boil these all the way through because you don't want them to lose their structural integrity because I put them in the bowl with a, a pinch of flaky salt and then you toss them and you kind of rough up the outsides. Um, try and get them in a single layer and uh, splashed a little bit of melted duck fat in when I tossed them as well just so that they're all nice and coated. So we'll put those to one side and move on to the Yorkshire puddings. These, as I say, have got some beef dripping in. I made this batter earlier on and rested it and it's a really simple batter to remember is 234 which is 200 grams of flour, 300 ml of milk and 4 eggs. Just whisk them all together, give the batter a nice chance to rest in the fridge and away you go. So these have got, they're about a quarter of the way full with that beef dripping, maybe a bit less. And as I say, the fat in both dishes is melted down. Uh, you want it to be hot when the, the food hits it. This isn't sizzling in quite the way that the potatoes did, but uh, I can see that it's all melted. And uh, that's that. I've got some leftover batter. The recipe is actually to make 12 Yorkshire puddings of that size. Um, so you can always freeze that and use it another time. Right, we'll get the bits back on. So I'm not sure how well you can see, but I've got the charcoal baskets either side. I've actually put one of the Weber foil trays face down between them, just to give a little bit of lift. Um, we don't want to end up with any ash in our food, so we'll try not to disturb them too much. So those potatoes go on there. Get your food grate. Put that back in place. And then the Yorkshire pudding's in over the top. Get that lid back on. So we've cooked today with two main setups. The beef we cooked uh, using the snake method, as I mentioned earlier on. And we did that, we set up a ring, a fuse if you like, of briquettes. Two and two, because I wanted it to burn a little bit hotter. And then you tip in a few lit briquettes at the beginning, and that lights the fuse and then it just burns round slowly. And you're always cooking indirect with that. So as the fuse burnt round, I kept the beef at the exact opposite. So it's never getting direct heat. Now what we're doing is still indirect, but a hotter heat. So we've got the charcoal basket set up uh, either side of the kettle, and then the food goes in the middle. Um, and as I say, it's still indirect because you don't actually have any food directly above the fire. But because there's more heat in there and you've got two sources, um, it's a fiercer heat, if you like. So really in both senses, you're using your barbecue a bit more like an oven than like a, a, a stove or something like that. Um, but what you're doing is using the correct amount of fuel to get the desired temperature. Currently we're cooking at about 200. Earlier on, as I said, it was somewhere between 160 and 180, depending on temp fluctuations as the briquettes take. I think I mentioned earlier on that you, with the single heat source, you want to keep your vent directly opposite that so that you, you draw the heat across the food, if you like. If you put your vent directly above the fuel, all you're doing is you're going to lose your heat uh, directly up out of the vent and then you'll have a cold zone the other side if you like. With the two heat sources, what you basically want is a channel between the two. And so you'll have your temperature probe, one side of the channel, and your heat, uh, your vent, sorry, the other side of the channel. Uh, and that provides equal suction if you like airflow. So it comes in through the middle of the bottom. The fire obviously draws it and then through out the top and it just gives you a nice ambient heat all the way through in the kettle.
All right, moment of truth then, everything's come together. We've got the York shears, the roast potatoes. I threw these parboiled carrots on at the end, just tossed in some chili honey. Got the meat here, which is lovely and rested, and some gravy here. So, first things first. We can open up our beef. It's always an exciting bit, <clears throat> a bit like a delicious past the parcel. <clears throat> Look at that. So I'm not sure if you can see. Beautiful, moist beef. Try and clear this foil away without making too much mess. Get that out of the way. So the way I like to, to approach this is take it off the bone, slice it, and then present it back on the bone. So I'm just take the slicing knife. Beautiful and soft. Get it between the bones. And then I did get my little boning knife out because I thought I might need it to take it off the bone, but <laughs> you can see how cleanly that's come away. And uh, same over here, just about. A little bit of the membrane sticking, but that's not half bad. Possibly with this middle one, I'll need to just get the, the knife on it. <clears throat> and the reason I'm using two knives is because this is a nice thin blade, sharp slicing knife. And I don't really want that coming in contact with any bone because you, you obviously risk the possibility of dulling it. So I shall get my clean bones on the board. You can see how soft that is. <clears throat> it's almost falling apart on us. And just pick that up on the blade of the knife and onto the bone for presentation. Same again over here. That is so soft. <clears throat> Possibly even a little too far gone, but I don't think you're going to have anybody complaining that the meat's too soft. But if you don't let it go far enough, then you might have people complaining that it's not soft enough. So, always better to... Keep it soft. Right, one last one. And this is made a bit easier by having a nice sharp slicing knife if you try and go at this with a dull knife then you'll just pull it to pieces and uh, obviously we're all right with pulled meat in the barbecue community but if it's not what you're after then <laughs> it might not be what people want <clears throat> so we've got our meat slice that's on there we'll just stick our Yorkshire puddings back here and this is probably good for Probably three of me and maybe five or six normal people but uh, if you're anything like me then you can handle probably a whole rib and a couple of Yorkshire puddings. Take these lovely chilli honey carrots out. <clears throat> and then it's just a case of getting our spuds on. Now you can of course plate up individually and uh, just give it to people on their plate but it's quite nice to have a platter in the middle and people can sort of help themselves and then they get to see 
the, the entire kind of fruits of your labour. And I think that's rather nice. A little bit of the straggly bits there. Well, we made a bit of a mess over here, but hopefully you don't think this is too messy. So jug of gravy, smoked Jacob's Ladder short rib, some chilli honey roasted carrots, some roast potatoes, some Yorkshire puddings, all done on a Weber kettle. One Weber kettle, with the exception of boiling the potatoes and parboiling the carrots. Now I think if you put that in front of your family or friends, nobody's going to be complaining. And if they find out that you managed to do it all on 157 kettle, people might be pretty impressed. Well, we're all finished up. We took it indoors and it went down a treat. Everything that we used in today's video is available on the Riverside website and all being well with COVID, we are hoping to start running some courses at the school again next year, 2021. Um, please check out the events page for announcements about that and follow Riverside on Instagram and on Facebook and, and obviously here on YouTube. Uh, I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for tuning in.